everybody, welcome back to the next part of my dialing in series for our Line 6 Helix. Uh, last week, I can't remember which uh, video I did, but uh, when I posted it up in the Facebook group, I had somebody uh, throw out a request, and I can't remember who it is, who, who made the request, so my apologies, uh, just shout at me, uh, send me a message and let me know who it was. Um, they wanted me to do, take a crack at doing something in the vein of Reeling in the Years uh, by Steely Dan. Uh, with the amazing Elliot Randall playing guitar on the leads. So I thought that would be a cool one to actually take a crack at as uh, Steely Dan's one of my favorite bands and that's a classic, classic song and a really cool solo. So I did do a performance video for this and it's up now so you can check that and hear how this tone works in the mix. It's the only guitar you're gonna hear in there. I found a good backing track with no guitars on it. This is definitely a different tone and it was a really tough one to get even close to. So like, like I always say, I'm not saying I've, I've copied the tone or, or got it exactly. I'm using a very different guitar. Apparently, Elliot used his, I believe it was a 63 Fender Strat, but the Strat had a uh, PAF humbucker in the neck position. I didn't have anything like that. I guess I could have used like my Revstar or whatnot, but I actually settled on using my Pacifica 611 and going with the neck position P90, believe it or not, which worked kind of nicely on this. So your results may vary depending on what guitar you use. But if you want to hear that in the mix, go listen to the performance video, which I have up now. And I kind of tried to get close to uh, playing those parts. What a... Some, some, some parts like this are a lot more difficult to play than the really, you know, sort of technically challenging pieces. Because this, is, from what I understand, was just like one take through, you know. Um, and it was kind of like, you know, like a lot of Steely Dan things, what you, you know, what was played that first time uh, ends up being it, unless they, you know, of course, hire a whole other band to come in and replace everything the next day. Um, so really interesting stuff, but it's a tough style to mimic. So I did my best with it anyways. It was fun and it's always enjoyable to play those types of things. Let's go over to HX Edit and take a look. This is a quite a different uh, dialing in uh, for a few reasons. Let's take a look at the amp first. Uh, in my research, um, Elliot said that he used an Ampeg SVT bass amp to play these solos. Uh, and from what also what I read, he used, it was mic'd with an AKG 414 condenser mic. So I did just that and I used um, our Ampeg SVT Bright model. I played around with a few cabs and I decided on the 115 Ampeg B15 with a 414 condenser at one inch off. Now the amp settings are as follows. Drive is on 10, bass is on 10. Mid is on eight with the mid frequency set to 3000 Hertz. Treble on 10, channel volume on 10, master on 10. I raised the sag to nine and the bias to 8.5 just to get the tone I was trying to look for on it. Now, um, let's go to the end of the chain here. Like normal, I used my LA Studio Comp, peak reduction of 5.5, gain of five and mix of 100. Some pretty wacky EQ stuff going on here. We'll come back to that in a second. Uh, room reverb with a decay of six, pre-delay of 15 milliseconds and a mix of 40%, just to give it a little bit of ambience in there. Now the EQs, uh, low cut and high cut in sort of my mastering section here, low cut at 300 hertz and high cut at 11 kilohertz. Um, low frequency set at 495 hertz with a Q of 1.2, dropping that back 9.4 dB clean up some muddiness. Um, the mid frequencies at one kilohertz with a Q of 0.7, boosting 12 dB. Crazy, crazy kind of EQs on this. And the high frequency set at 7.7 .7 kilohertz with a Q of 2.3, and that's boosted 7.6 dB, so pretty crazy. I also went in, there was, you know, there was this really interesting sizzling tone to this that was really tough to balance, and I hope I got close. It, this is, this is, I'd have to say it was one of the more challenging ones I've done yet to even sort of get in the ballpark. But I went with the 10 band graphic EQ, boosted 62.5 hertz, up 5.6 dB, 125 hertz, up 4.4 dB, and 250 hertz, up 3.5 dB. One kilohertz is up 0.1 dB. I probably just didn't get that zeroed back to zero. Two kilohertz at 0.2 dB. 4 kilohertz at plus 4.2 dB. And look at these, eight kilohertz and 16 kilohertz at plus 10 dB. Now this is kind of weird because I'm boosting frequencies below and above the points where 
I put my low and high cuts and some people might say that's counterintuitive and it really isn't necessarily you know we can get those sloped off cuts but then gently bring some of those frequencies back in to add what we need so sometimes it seems like you're some counterintuitive EQ moves but in the end you know it works well and sometimes I do one set of EQ moves and I add another one and I don't want to kind of go mess with the other one since it kind of gave me something I was looking for and I kind of play around with it. So I, that's how I end up with some of these sometimes. But it, this worked out nicely, I thought, in this case. Now, here's the thing. If you notice, I have a Hedgehog D9 overdrive model with the gain set at 8, the tone at 3.6, and the level at 6.8. But I have that on path B, path 1B. Um, using a split block, okay? Uh, I used a split AB in case I wanted to merge them in a different way, but I ended up just using them equal. But if you notice, I return the distorted sound after the amp and speaker cabinet. Now, normally that's gonna sound really horrible, like really horrible. Um, in fact, let me give you an idea of how horrible. That would sound like this. Basically like plugging an overdrive pedal, you know, directly into a mixing console. The sort of impedance mismatch sounds like that, very chainsaw-like. But the funny thing is, um, when I had just the amp on, and let's take a listen to what just the amp sounded like now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the EQs off. Okay, I'll keep the compressor reverb on. This is what just these amp settings sounded like, okay? <laughs> Kind of some cool qualities, very smooth and creamy. So any folks who want to try using some of the bass amps for guitar, there's probably some pretty cool tones in there. Having said that, um, that's not very much like the sound I was hearing on Real and in the Years. There was a real breakup and sizzle to it. So this is where I started introducing the EQs. So here's the sound before I bring the, the last EQ into the mix. So when I bring this in, you see how it kind of gets rid of some of those uh, you know, muddy mids and lets the highs cut through a lot more. And the upper mids cut through a lot more. Now I bring the 10 band graphic into it. bad but it was missing enough gain and that sizzle that I was talking about before so I really kind of racked my head. I thought well I need some sort of an overdrive pedal but by putting any overdrive pedal just straight into the front of the amp it wasn't giving me that sort of sizzly saturation I wanted so I had an idea that I would take the overdrive pedal put it on the other path parallel to the amp and return it after so we get some of you know this tone which on its own was way too thin for reeling in the ears. But when we blend them equally, it blends in some of that tone with some of the amp tone you just heard. And that sounded like this. Now, depending on the pickups you use, depending on the guitar you use, depending on your playing style, you may have to alter this. So two things to watch for. We could use the split here, and this is the reason I did it. I ended up in the performance video settling here. You know, maybe on a different day I would change that up a bit, but if I pull this back a little bit, let's hear how this sounds. <laughs>
So, you know, you can go back even more on that. Now some of that sizzle's going away, right? Almost sounds a little too smooth to me, but it's gonna be up to you and, and your ideals and what you think sounds the best with your guitar. I ultimately ended up here with an equal split between them. Okay, some, some folks might find that a little too abrasive. Um, you know, we could pull that back a little bit and find your, your spot that, that you like it at best. But I found that that kind of worked. Uh, but those are the areas you can kind of go into. And the other area you can look at would be the EQ and going up to these higher frequencies as well. And if we pull these back, You know, you can make adjustments there that might suit your guitar, your monitoring system, or just your ears better, okay? So I went with these settings in the performance video, and I hope you guys like it. Uh, it was a fun one to do. So again, to whoever requested it, thank you so much, and I'm really sorry I don't remember who it was. I get a lot of requests, and there's so many names, you know, uh, bouncing around with, with each request that it's sometimes hard to, re to remember. So, um, thank you guys so much for tuning in. This will be on custom tone, uh, when this posts also, um, please like the video, share it, uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and check out the performance video and do the same with that. If you don't mind, I really appreciate your support and the kind words. All right. Uh, Thanks so much for tuning in, guys. I'll be back soon with some more content. And uh, coming this week is a new Marketplace preset that I really enjoy. I have a cool video coming up for that. So keep your eye out for that if you're interested. Ciao for now.